So yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today. Um, I'm going to discuss the uh, emerging percutaneous therapies uh, for the tricuspid valve, an area which is still very new for the um, kind of world of cardiology and interventional cardiology. So tricuspid valve disease can be caused by primary uh, valvular pathologies resulting in damage to valves or secondary to structural changes in the right heart. The latter often occurs by chronic pressure overload from left-sided cardiac disease, atrial fibrillation, or pulmonary hypertension. This results in annular dilatation and leaflet malcoaptation, resulting in functional tricuspid regurgitation. TR of at least moderate severity is estimated to affect as many as 1.6 million people in the United States. The prognosis of untreated tricuspid regurgitation, as we've heard, remains poor, with medical therapy restricted to diuretics and heart failure medication, which is often very ineffective. Current guidelines favor uh, early tricuspid valve repair in patients with tricuspid annular dilatation undergoing um, left-sided cardiac surgery, even if the tricuspid regurgitation is mild. However, surgical repair, is, as we've heard, is associated with a high risk of morbidity and mortality, which has over time resulted in relative surgical avoidance of this valve. In view of this, along with the recent advances of in, in interventional cardiology, the unmet clinical needs of this valve um, have led to the exploration and investment uh, in the percutaneous options in managing the so-called forgotten valve. Probably won't spend too much time on tricuspid valve anatomy because it's already been done very eloquently. So, but just brief reminder, the tricuspid valve anatomical structure is complex and constituted of three leaflets, the annulus, the chordae, and the papillary muscles. The correct function of the valve depends on the integrity and coordination uh, of all these structures. The three leaflets include the anterior leaflet, which is the largest and most mobile, the septal leaflet, which is the second largest and least mobile, and the posterior leaflet, which tends to be the smallest and triangular in shape. The tricuspid annulus is a, also a saddle-shaped ellipsoid with the highest points located in the anteroposterior line and lowest in the mediolateral line. In the setting of functional tricuspid regurgitation, annular dilatation predominantly occurs in the anterior and posterior leaflet attachments, causing the valve to become more planar and circular. Because of the preferential dilatation of the anterior and posterior leaflets, malcoaptation uh, primarily occurs between the anteroposterior and posteroseptal commissures rather than the anteroseptal commissure. When considering uh, intervention on the tricuspid valve, four main anatomic structures surround it and so are therefore at risk of being impinged during procedures. The conduction system ca coursing the membranous septum at three to five millimeters from the anteroseptal commissure, the right coronary artery encircling the atrioventricular groove, and the non-coronary uh, non sinus of valsalva, and finally the coronary sinus ostium. In addition to this, there are some um, challenges uh, such as the lack of calcium, and so it doesn't offer the same anchorage for devices such as with TAVI valves, the angulation in relation to the superior and inferior vena cava, a trabeculated and thin right ventricle making it less suitable for transapical approach, and the frequent presence of, we've heard, of pre-existing cardiac implantable electronic devices. And several technologies for percutaneous repair or replacement of the tricuspid valve are currently under preclinical or clinical evaluation. Their strategies are tailored to the anatomic pathology, and these can broadly be grouped as uh, coaptation devices, anilplasty devices, or replacement valves. Whilst most of these technologies are still in their infancy, many have reported early safety and feasibility data which show promising results. I will briefly outline some of these in the next few slides. So firstly, the annulaplasty devices, these are uh, aimed to reduce the annular dimensions and designed to reproduce the well-established surgical techniques addressing the mechanism of secondary TR. Uh, firstly, the CardioBand tricuspid repair system is uh, uh, a device by Edwards Life Sciences, currently um, a CE-marked dev approved device for uh, the treatment of tricuspid regurgitation. It is a direct sutureless and adjustable surgical-like uh, Dacron band based on the initial cardioband device for the treatment of mitral regurgitation. 
A steerable device is inserted through a transfemoral 24 French axis sheath, and up to 17 anchors are deployed on the atrial side uh, of the anterior and posterior tricuspid annulus to fix this Dacron band. Um, subsequently, a size adjustable tool is then delivered to enable the cinching um, of the annulus, uh, providing a controlled reduction in the anterior, posterior, and septolateral uh, annular di diameters. So the initial data so far looks promising and further data is expected with ongoing patient recruitment. Another annuloplasty device which has been used is the tricinch coil by Fortec, which is designed to reduce the septolateral diameter of the uh, tricuspid annulus by cinching the anteroposterior commissure. A small profile hook is targeted between the mid anterior to posterior region, following which traction is then applied and maintained by a deployment of a large diameter stent in the IVC. Reduction of the septolateral diameter then improves that coaptation between the leaflets and therefore reducing the tricuspid regurgitation. I'll quickly just share one of these cases which was performed at Monash by interventionists Rob Gooley and Lee McCormick. Uh, this was of a 91-year-old uh, female with permanent atrial fibrillation and in NYHA class three. She had no previous cardiac surgery but was on the whole very frail. Um, desp despite optimal diuretic therapy, she complained of worsening peripheral edema and abdominal bloating. Echocardiogram had demonstrated <clears throat> Echocardiogram had demonstrated severe functional tricuspid regurgitation with a septolateral uh, diameter 57 millimeters, um, a moderate, uh, moderate palmy hypertension, and preserved LV function. So she was enrolled into uh, study as a patient for a tricinch procedure. The procedure was performed under general anesthetic with TOE guidance. It was carried out uh, with a 24 French sheath. Arterial access is also required for these procedures as we need to do right coronary angiography to ensure no extrinsic compression. <clears throat> the device is then taken up through the IVC uh, into the right atrium and steered toward the anteroposterior uh, commissure of the tricuspid valve. The coil anchor is then delivered into the tricuspid valve annulus, as can be seen on the left-hand panel, targeting the anteroposterior region of the annulus. Once the coil is deployed, traction is then applied to the, by using the delivery system to reduce the septolateral diameter while simultaneously observing a decrease in the tricuspid regurgitation on TOE. Finally, when adequate TR is observed, its stent is deployed in the IVC to maintain this tension. And the final picture is just of the diagnostic shot of the right coronary artery, which is mandated at the end to, 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 to ensure no, um, right coronary artery pat patency. Um, at follow-up, our patient uh, was found to have improved NYHA status, uh, uh, resumption, uh, complete resolution of her abdominal bloating, and she managed an extra 68 meters on her six-minute walk, walk test. Uh, this device is still undergoing a CE mark trial with ongoing um, patient recruitment. Uh, the final annuloplasty system which I'll mention is the Triline device. This is a transjugular suture-based technology based on the original Mitraline, first used for the treatment of functional MR in 2013. This aims to reduce the annular dimensions through tissue plication. A um, steerable catheter is taken from the internal jugular and uh, used to deliver a pair of polyester pledgets in proximity to the anteroposterior and septoposterior commissures which are then cinched to obliterate the posterior tricuspid leaflet. Mechanistically, this is similar to the proven uh, K procedure, uh, which essentially results in bicuspidization of the tricuspid valve. The safety and, um, and performance of this device is currently being evaluated in the SCOUT2 study. And the next group of devices I will discuss are designed to improve leaflet coaptation. The triclip edge-to-edge repair by Abbott is adopted from the commonly used MitraClip system. It is currently, um, unsurprisingly, the most popular um, percutaneous approach with over 650 procedures performed worldwide. And I say its popularity is this is just mainly because of operator familiarity with the system and the availability of the device being uh, used off-label. Um, the procedure can be performed via the transjugular or transfemoral approach um, and in the largest analysis published, uh, this procedure has led to NYHA improve, class improvement in three quarters of patients. 
Unlike the mitral valve, the challenges here confer to the additional leaflet, and so different clipping strategies like one versus two clips have been investigated in ex vivo models. And their analysis um, uh, very elo eloquently shows that the uh, clips on the anteroceptal leaflets were associated with the best improvements in hemodynamics. The former repair system by Edwards Life Sciences is another transcatheter option designed to increase native leaflet coaptation surface by occupying the regurgitant, regurgitant orifice area. This device is a passively expandable foam-filled balloon spacer, which is advanced by the left subclave in through the left subclave vein through a 20 uh, to 24 French introducer and placed um, within the tricuspid annulus over a rail, which is then anchored in the right ventricular apex. The 30-day outcomes of 29 patients in the early feasibility studies um, unfortunately demonstrated there uh, was intraprocedural perforation of the RV in two patients, with nine patients having at least one adverse event uh, after 30-day follow-up. And so technical improvements are currently underway to minimize the risk of such adverse events in the upcoming uh, studies. The Pascal tricuspid valve repair system integrates the technical aspects from the former and the mitral clip devices by combining a 10 millimeter central spacer and two paddles and clasps that attach the device to the valve leaflets, thus overcoming those possible limitations of the previous two devices separately. Uh, the idea here is that the spacer fills the regurgitant orifice area and the paddle's designed to avoid the stress concentration on the uh, native leaflets. It is a 22 French system and delivered via the tran transfemoral approach. Of note, this product has just received a CE mark approval for the mitral valve in this last week. So the first cases for the tricuspid valve have been performed in the last year, and so we will be expecting a lot more data on the tricuspid valve in due course. I'll spend a few minutes uh, talking about tricuspid valve replacements. Firstly, the orthotopic transcapter valve replacement. Um, transcatheter implantation of valve prosthesis into degenerative bioprosthetic valves have been performed for a number of years now. These have been dubbed the valve and valve procedure. About two thirds are done using the Melody valve and the rest are done with Edward Sapien. Um, in recent international registry of 152 patients, um, 150 had successful procedures confirming a high, the expected high procedural success rates. Most of the patients in this re registry demonstrated excellent reduction in TR, with the majority ended up with no TR at all or mild at the very most. There were adverse events, however, with mortality at 12 months reported in 6.6%. However, a significant proportion of these patients were considered in pre, uh, poor pre-morbid condition um, with pre-procedure NYHA class four, highlighting the often late nature that these patients are considered for tricuspid valve intervention. I'll quickly share one of these uh, cases which we performed at Monash. This was of a 72-year-old female with previous bioprosthetic valve replacement to all four valves, secondary to rheumatic heart disease. Uh, she also had stroke and atrial fibrillation. Um, her de degenerative bioprosthetic valve was a 31 millimeter St. Jude Epic and it caused her to have severe uh, or notable bloating with nausea, deranged liver function test and um, intractable pulmonary edema. Uh, the procedure was performed, for, uh, again, from right femoral venous axis using a 16 French system. An arrow catheter, as you can be seen on the left-hand panel, was used to transverse the tricuspid valve uh, prosthesis, and this was then exchanged for a stiffer safari wire in the right ventricle. Uh, the delivery system was placed up front through a snare from the contralateral side as an aid to preventing the prolapsing of the device into the SVC. We then uh, used a 29 millimeter Sapien S3 uh, valve over the safari wire and positioned it over the radiopaque annular ring of the prosthetic tricuspid valve. Uh, this was deployed with no complications and the patient was left with trivial tricuspid regurgitation at the end of the procedure. The patient was well at discharge and at follow-up had no normalized liver function tests and resolution of uh, the intractable peripheral edema. Uh, on the whole, this remains a safe and efficacious way to treat patients with degenerative valve prosthesis without redo uh, stenotomy. But these valves are not suitable for native tricuspid valve diseases. There is no uh, adequate calcium to facilitate the anchorage of the device. So the Navigate uh, bioprosthesis is the first and currently the only available device allowing fully orthotopic percutaneous uh, valve replacement. Um, it 
uh, tri sorry, tricuspid valve replacement. It um, consists of a self-expanding nitinol stent with three pericardial leaflets. It is currently available in uh, five different sizes from 36 to 52 millimeters. The system's delivery catheter is introduced via 42 French, uh, introducer via the transjugular vein or via transatrial approach. The first in human successful implantation of this was done in uh, November 2016. And since then, 11 compassionate use cases have been uh, done worldwide with a 91% procedural success rate. Um, whilst preliminary data looks promising, uh, modifications are currently uh, in development to improve the coaxiality of the uh, device with a tricuspid annulus and uh, the device ceiling. Finally, a brief mention to heterotopic caval valve implantations, or CAVIs as they have been referred to. Uh, these are uh, essentially the placement of a valve in the inferior ve vena cava alone or in combination with a second valve in the superior vena cava to reduce the amount of regurgitant blood um, from the degenerative tricuspid valve from ending back into the venous system. The trick valve seen here is a self-expanding nitinol stent with the only one, large, it's a, uh, the only one that's large enough for bicaval bi -cable implants. Uh, the balloon expandable Sapien XT and S3 uh, have also been used off-label for this. However, their smaller size only makes them suitable for IBC uh, implantation. There have been several reported case series um, using this treatment, and it's offered notable symptomatic improvement to their patients. There are two uh, uh, trials currently evaluating this treatment with particular emphasis on quality of life. Um, so, in summary, the tricuspid valve, following years of neglect with challenging anatomy, has found itself in catch-up mode in cardiology. Nonetheless, there's been huge progress with percutaneous valve interventions, and um, they're likely to make their way into mainstream intervention, hopefully in the next few years. We are likely to see technologies which are directed at repairing the tricuspid valve, such as the annulaplasty and the coaptation devices. In addition, we will see more devices that permit valve implantation or replacement. The early feasibility and safety data so far been promising and pre preliminary uh, efficacy data shown symptomatic improvement for patients. Uh, we hope to see these technologies um, provide the um, unmet kind of solutions for the unmet clinical needs of a significant patient population in whom definitive treatments could not previously be offered. Thank you.